teachers and students. We're going to do a lab on electricity and it's a very engaging one that your students will have a lot of fun with. For this you're going to need some modeling dough. I bought this eight pack at the Dollar Tree and one of these containers is probably enough for a pair of students so this eight pack could serve 16 students. You're also going to need some LED lights. I'll give you a close-up of what those look like and you can order these from an electronic supply company. they're not very expensive. You can get a whole string of them. This is a connector for a battery and the battery I'm using today is a 9 volt battery. The rectangular kind like this. So this just clips on the end and has the two wires. Now to store these kits for your students I simply put the 9 volt battery in a small baggie and then I put all the other materials into a larger baggie like this. The reason I store the battery separately is for this reason. This battery, unlike the common cylindrical batteries, has both the positive and negative terminals on the same end. If those were to touch something metal, like a leg of the LED light, that would complete a circuit and it would actually short circuit it and can generate quite a bit of heat. If you were to put this in your pocket and that was to hit up against a coin, it could burn your pocket. So I always store these separately. You can also put a piece of tape over the top of that if you want, and that would do the same thing. So that's just a storage trick that will help you out when you're getting this kit, these kits ready for your students. So here's how this lab works. Let's experiment a little bit and see what we can do with electricity. I begin by telling the students to only take out the materials that I ask them to take out and to follow exactly the instructions that I give them. Otherwise, they will go off on their own tangents and miss some of the points that I want them to catch along the way. You can see that I have three LED lights in the kit, a blue, a green, and a red. You can choose other ones. There are white LED lights, blinking LED lights, some that blink in different colors. So be creative when you're ordering those and get some that will interest the children. You can also order beepers that will make a lot of noise in your classroom if that's what you want to accomplish. I also got the 9 volt batteries from the Dollar Tree. So the only thing that I didn't get from the Dollar Tree was this clip and those three LED lights. You might be able to make this work with Christmas tree lights that you've clipped off, but these LED lights will work much better. The first thing I have the students do is take out their modeling dough and knead it in their hands to get it nice and soft and softball. Start working it. And I have quite a bit here so that you can see it better. And once it's soft, they're going to separate it into two lumps, two equal sized lumps, and round them out into spheres. Like that. Next, they will attach the battery clip to the battery by simply snapping it into place. There's only one way it can go on. And they're going to put one wire into one of the spheres of dough and the other wire into the other one like that. Then they take one of the LEDs and they spread the two legs on it like that and they plug one leg into each sphere of dough. And then ask the students to stand up if something happens. And you'll find that about half the kids in class stand up. In my case, nothing happened. And you can ask the students, why did it work for some students and not for others? Typically, my students say the battery's bad, but it turns out that if you experiment and you take the LED and turn it around, it lights up. There's a positive and negative leg on an LED. You'll notice that one of the legs is longer and one is shorter. And what you want to do is experiment to find out which one goes where. If it doesn't work one way, simply turn it around and it lights up. And you can get lots of LEDs to go into the spheres and light up at the same time. Now, I had three strikes in a row. All three of mine were put in backwards. And there they are. Three lights. Now, there's some other interesting things you can do. If the two lumps of dough touch, the lights go out. Why is that? It's like a light switch. Off, on, off, on. LED lights are very interesting as opposed to the lights we typically use in our home. They don't use a lot of electricity. 
but they put out light in a single direction. It's not very bright like that, but if I point it towards a camera, you might notice that it looks much brighter. Viewed from the side, it's not very bright, but viewed straight on, it is. And for that reason, they make very good headlamps in new cars. So with these new cars that have the little tiny light bulbs in them, those are LED lights. And we can use these in our house too, but we have to figure out a way to spread that light out so it's not just going in a single direction like a spotlight. Our next task is to make a string of Christmas lights. So how would we do that? Ask the students to figure out how to make a string of lights so the lights are spaced apart rather than all bundled together like that. You can pause the video to let your students think about that and explore a way to make a string of lights. And there we have it, a string of lights in a row now. We had to use four lumps of clay to span those three lights. I'm gonna turn out the light so it shows up even better. You might wanna do this in the classroom with at least some of the lights off, cause it's very pretty. Now there is a problem with Christmas lights that are wired this way. If one of them goes out, they all go out. Simply by removing one of them, all of the lights go out. And a long time ago, strings of Christmas lights were wired like this. If one of them burned out, they all went out. The problem was that in a string of 100 lights, if one of them burned out, you had to test each individual bulb by replacing it with a good one. And hopefully it wasn't that 100th light bulb that was bad, because it would take you a while to find the bad light bulb in that long string of lights. And some strings had 150 or 200 lights in them. And worse was if your string of 100 lights had two bad bulbs, because it could be the first and the second, or the first and the third, or the first and the fourth, or the first and the 99th, or the first and the 100th, or the second and the third, or the second and the fourth, or the second and the fifth, or the second and the 99th, or the second and the 100th, or the third and the fourth. And we could go on and on and on like this. Older students may wish to figure out how many different possibilities there are in a string of 100 lights with two light bulbs out. Typically, people, when that happened, they just threw away the whole string of lights and went and bought a new one. It simply wasn't worth the time. So here's a challenge. How can we make a string of lights so they're not all bundled together as they were with those two spheres of dough? The light bulbs are spread out. And yet, if you take one bulb out, the others stay lit. How could we wire these to solve that problem. Pause the video and think about that, and then experiment, see if you can figure out a way to make a string of lights so the lights are spaced far apart as possible, and removing one doesn't make the others go out. Well, here's a solution. Instead of rolling spheres, I've rolled these long snakes. So the electricity flows into one wire, across the LED, and then back through the other wire. But it also flows to the blue one the same way, and to the red one the same way. And if I pull out a light, the others don't go out. In fact, when I pull out a light, the others tend to get brighter. Watch the blue light and green light get brighter as more electricity is flowing through them. Now this is called wiring in parallel and you can probably see why we call that. The other type where we have a single continuous loop with many different LEDs in it is called wiring in series. So wiring in series, if one goes out, they all go out. But wiring parallel requires more wire, but if one goes out, the rest stay lit. You may wanna let your students experiment with some other types of LED lights, or maybe Christmas lights, and see if they work as well. A Christmas light on the old style of lights were incandescent lights. And those burn differently than an LED. You can also get little bu buzzers and beepers and things like that that students can plug into the, into the dough. 
The reason this works is the water and salt in the dough conducts electricity. And depending on how wet that dough is and how much salt is in it, determines how much electricity flows through it. It's called resistance. Electricity likes to flow in a loop from positive to negative. The red wire is positive, the black is negative. And on the LED, the long leg, the long wire, is positive, the short one is negative. And it has to flow in that direction. That's why batteries have to be put in a certain way for something to work. If you reverse them, the positive and negatives are backwards and the electricity can't flow. But the amount of water and salt in that dough is what creates the resistance. This light bulb doesn't need the nine volts of that battery to work. You could actually light these off a single one and a half volt battery. But by the time you ran it through the dough, much of that voltage would be lost due to resistance. So have your students experiment with this as they explore electricity.